Mobile Mayor Sandy Stimson has just finished his first year in office. So where does he stand on some of the promises he made to you during his campaign? Fox News investigative reporter Renee Diles is doing a fact check on the mayor's first year. She's here to tell us what she found. Renee? Well, Lenise and Bob, Mayor Stimson has had his share of unexpected challenges during his first year, including an ice storm right after he took office, and most recently, an Ebola scare. Now, in between those two bookend events, he's also had to tackle the promises he made concerning his priorities and his vision for the city. For any politician, the road to office is paved with campaign promises. For then candidate Sandy Stimson, public safety was a top priority. Feel the citizens do not feel safe right now. Uh, they just feel like that uh, the streets aren't safe and the homes aren't safe, doors being kicked in. By his first week in office, Stimson had already made his pick for police chief. One of James Barber's first actions was to deal with a police scandal that led to the demotion of a captain and discipline of three officers. In other words, the patrol guys were taking burglary reports, but the detectives were changing them. Specifically to make the numbers look? Make the numbers look lower. That move led to a drastic increase in crime statistics. And you see what happens, our crime jumps back up. But mm -hmm. it's, it's not that there was more crime, it was just that now we're actually reporting I see. crime. The chief says crime statistics are improving, but he still faces a challenge of holding on to officers who say they are underpaid. So we're losing, or we're losing approximately a precinct uh, a year. But both the chief and Stimson believe the city is on track to the mayor's original goal for 2020. And there's three things that you've got to do if we're going to be the safest city in America. And that's, first off, that you've got to have crime prevention. Then you've got to have uh, the enforcement. But you also have to have rehabilitation. And so there some of all of that is going on, I would say that we're not as far along in the process when it comes to rehabilitation as a community, but that's just not something the mayor's office alone does. Stimson says he hasn't forgot his campaign promises to improve parks and clean up the city. Going back in hindsight being 2020, I wish we had jumped on the alternative that we came up with on the grass cutting earlier, you know, because it really got out of hand. We were not able to keep up with it uh, with the city personnel, but the grass cutting contracts, you know, by the time we got to August, you know, we were kind of in sync uh, with what needed to be done. But I think next year that we'll be ahead of it. And I think that uh, the citizens will see a big difference in the uh, maintenance of the ditches. But one of Stimson's goals was not met. Regarding the penny sales tax increase, it rolls off in 2015. But when it rolls off, we will not do anything to uh, put it back on. Stimson vetoed a council vote to extend the 1% sales tax for three years instead of only two months as he had recommended. But that political fight was lost when the council voted to override the veto. I'm convinced that the city cannot do without this revenue. City Council Member Fred Richardson says he'd like to see better communication between the 9th and 10th floors at Government Plaza. I think he has people ready or working for him are determined to show this council that we have the power. It is not about who, who has the power. It's about providing the greatest level of service we can provide for the citizens that we represent. Some other council members echo that concern. Council members continuously ask for information about um, projects that are coming up and the priorities. We, we would like to learn more about how those priorities are put in place. We need to know what projects are coming so that there are not so many questions when it does get to the council's agenda. Having the dialogue, uh, putting in the, uh, the grunt work uh, behind the agenda items to, to build uh, the cohesiveness and to build uh, the support, I think, are areas where I realize there are weaknesses and I'm hopeful as we move forward uh, we will see continued progress. Mayor Stimson believes both floors can work toward better communication. You've got to be able to have, you know, kind of frank conversations with each other uh, in such a way that uh, it's done to a degree um, 
in confidence until a decision is made. During the campaign, Stimson promised transparency for his administration. He announced an open door policy and even removed the door from his office. <laughs> So how's that promise going? This is the 10th floor where Mayor Stimson's office is located here in Government Plaza. Now the mayor's open door is behind this door, which is always locked. The mayor's chief of staff says most of the locks from the previous administration have been removed. We're trying to get clear doors on that for, you know, the, the transparency. Uh, purposes. Mayor Stimson says removing the door was symbolic of transparency in his office. We have been very open uh, to every every request from the media. I think he maybe told me when I get down there I can sit up at my desk and say, you know, I got Willie Earl out there. I don't know who he is, but bring him on in. Not going to happen. Willie will not get in the office. <laughs> I can tell you right now. Willie will not make it in the office. There are some times when a citizen may show up, you know, that I'm not available. Now we also want to hear from you about the mayor's first year, and that's why we have put up an online report card. Just go to our homepage and click on Mayor Sandy Stimson's uh, report for first year report card. Now you will notice when you hover over one of the items, you're going to see the description to the right hand side. Now we want you to mark your grade either A through F for the mayor in each of the categories and then we're going to have the results for, for you tomorrow night on Fox 10 News at 5 p.m. and on Fox10TV.com. Bob and Lenny.